Is it time to reform the political system? That's the only question anyone seems interested in answering at the moment. There's certainly no shortage of answers. Each of the three major political parties has set forward its plans and expectations for parliamentary reform. The most detailed plans have come from the Conservative Party. David Cameron has set out a wave of reforms he'd like to make if he's elected at the next general election. Now we've come over here to Ealing to speak to Angie Bray, who's the potential Conservative candidate for Ealing Central and Acton. We've got her views on parliamentary reform. OK, so uh, we're here talking to Angie Bray, who's the uh, Conservative candidate for Ealing Central and Acton. Angie, thanks very much for talking to us today. David Cameron's been outlining his plans for um, parliamentary reform, particularly taking power away from individual MPs, giving it more to committees and elected bodies. Can we get your, uh, your take on this, please? I think what he's trying to say is that he wants to remove the power of government, uh, the government of the day, to say, right, with our majority, we, we want to have so-and-so on that committee and they will chair it. And, you know, we'll have so many from this party and so many from that party, which is, I mean, that is meant to reflect the pr proportionality of the House. But I think it, what, he, what David Cameron is trying to say is that amongst the MPs themselves, the backbenchers, they may well know that so-and-so has a particular talent in whatever the field is. Let's say it's, it's health. Um, and just because the government and its whips don't particularly want that person uh, on that select committee, there's no reason if the backbenchers think they'd be ideal that the back the backbenchers shouldn't uh, get their way on that. What about Mr Cameron's plans to reform the school's entrance system? Do you think he's doing the same thing here? We do feel that it's very important that we start allowing schools more freedom to tailor themselves to the demands and the needs and the, and, and the desires of their local community. So we do want to see uh, the teachers, the head teachers in particular, but the teachers, the governors, the local school governors, parents, take a much more active role, and that would mean giving them more power. I mean, that's the way you encourage an active role, is by saying, fine, if you do take an active role, you'll actually have the means of making a difference. And I think we do want to empower people to start running their schools in a much more local way without always having Whitehall saying, no, no, you've got to meet this target, that target, you must spend so many hours a week on this subject. So we think schools should get back to doing what they do best, which is deciding what their parents, their local community wants and being able to live up to that. Now, of course, the Conservatives aren't the only ones putting across plans to reform Parliament. They're coming from all sides of the argument. How far do you think we should go in terms of reforming the parliamentary system? I think it would be a shame to chuck the, uh, the baby out with the bathwater, if I can put it that way. I mean, we have arrived with a parliament which historically is considered to be one of the finest examples of democracy in the world, and at its best, I think it probably is. Um, but along the way, it's picked up some bad habits, and we've got to get rid of those bad habits, and that does mean modernising in some ways. But I would... I would really advise against just saying we need to start from scratch, we need to change everything, because there are some very good things about our parliamentary system which I wouldn't want to just see thrown away. Does Parliament need to have a set term? It's interesting. On the one hand, it would seem to give people a more immediate election this time, um, if Gordon Brown was to have to go this year rather than wait for the five years. In future, does it change anything? Because actually, Parliaments can often run out of steam after two or three years. Uh, but if we have a set term, that means that they'd have to go for the full four years because that's a set term. Uh, with the flexibility of the Prime Minister of the day being able to choose their time to go, it does actually allow that flexibility for somebody to recognise that actually they can't go on, they need an election, just as much as it allows them the luxury of waiting to the fifth year. I don't know. I think David Cameron is right to say he'd like to examine it. But to say here and now, I think it's an answer to a lot of problems. I'm not sure. I think it may have problems of its own. I do think in terms of expenses, uh, that's really got to be dealt with. Um, nobody ever believed that they were sending somebody to Parliament to represent them to also enrich themselves in perhaps the way that some MPs have done. So that has clearly got to be looked at. Um, my own view is that as much as possible we need to get rid of allowances because I think that having allowances and expenses on the side is actually just a substitute for having an open and transparent salary system. So I think, where possible, we need to get rid of all that, especially since it seems to have been a second way of rewarding yourself instead of taking a bigger salary. And we need to look at the salary structure. My own view is 
that perhaps the best way forward in the future would be to attach the MP's salary to a civil service grade, whatever grade that might be, and then say from now on, when that civil service grade gets a pay rise, MPs will get the same automatically, no questions, and no ifing or butting by the MPs. It would just become uh, a neutral way of raising their salary. I think that would take a lot of the problem away. Great. Angie, thanks very much for talking to us today. So, we've looked at parliamentary reform, how far it needs to go, and what we need to achieve to get a system that the voters will trust again. To find out more about Angie, log on to angiebray.org.uk. In the meantime, keep checking out catch21.co.uk. Leave us your thoughts and opinions on this and our other videos.